so we're just arriving at the allotment and not good this was my green polytunnel yeah, great. um it was there that's the table that was inside the polytunnel and now it's over there yay devastated um wow. yeah so we've come down to do a quick few jobs and i think it's going to be us oh uh, yeah trying to um sort out the damage really so yeah not the best start to today but these things happen okay here we go hi um i'm angie welcome to my first ever vlog um all about my allotment and gardening i garden here with my children and um we have a lovely time it's very bright and sunny i've chosen a really excellent spot um as you'll see from this video, it hasn't gone the way I expected. I expected to come and do a few jobs, give you a little plot tour, show you like, well, the state that the allotment was in, it being January, but um, I've arrived today after some windy weather to find my green polytunnel had blown. Um, so yeah, <laughs> clearly my attempt at pegging it down was not substantial enough. Um, there's ups and downs in gardening this is a down but yeah we'll fix it it'll be fine it's been windy the last few days and unfortunately that means that my green polytunnel has been the dust um and it's blown right across my plot um if you can see this is where the polytunnel was this is my original polytunnel um this is where my polytunnel was. This table was in the polytunnel and it had a big bed at the back. Um, ended up blown right across. The frame's still intact. Um, <laughs> Imi here is being very positive and has said, at least it blew that way. Um, Cause if it had blown this way, it would have destroyed the more expensive polytunnel. So that's something but the door's pretty much, well, it's hanging off. That's really bent. Um, I don't know what kind of state the cover is in. At the minute, it looks okay. I haven't got the heart to actually check it properly at the minute, but if it is okay, maybe we can put it back up. If not, maybe we're looking at a brassica frame <laughs> and get some netting um, to reuse it. But yeah, gutted, gutted today. Yeah, so, well, we don't know. We don't know if it's ripped or not yet. So we'll have to wait and see. There's a middle. So yeah, so today's job is now to tie down the frame that we've got left. Um, we've got a really heavy bench down there. So we're gonna tie it to that. Obviously it's not got the cover on anymore, so it's not likely to blow again, but yeah.
want to tell you some other things about my allotment today. So cheer us up. Um, I'm going to be digging up some Jerusalem artichokes, which are perfect for harvesting just now. Um, I'm also going to have a look at my beetroot, which has been out in the really cold weather and looks really, really miserable. But I have a feeling that some of the roots might be okay. So fingers crossed that will be a positive thing um, after a very sad arrival at the allotment. This patch where we've been growing some beetroot, um, the beetroot were growing all last summer um, and they were ready for harvesting in the autumn and we did harvest most of them but we left a few here in the bed. Now as you can see when I pick this up, there's, it's completely frosted, I mean all of the top growth is gone. This one is feeling squishy, I'm not sure that we're going to want to eat that one but hopefully under here there are a few that are a little bit less so, oh yeah, so this one's good so this one you can see there um it's still totally gone on the leaves but it's super firm so that'll be perfect for eating so i'm gonna be harvesting what i can of these and then the ones that are no good will go in the compost the ones that are looking okay we're gonna take home and I'm gonna grate those up um, and use them in baking. So here we go, let's see how many we get. So that's for the compost, and that's for the compost. Oops. Quite a lot for the compost. Oh, that one feels okay. These are okay. I'm not sure, some of these are looking a bit too squishy, maybe if I'd have caught them maybe a couple of weeks ago. But this side seems better somehow. So that one's okay. That one's good. These that are planted, the ones that are on their own, um, a lot of them have gone. I do multi sow beetroot and the ones that are still in groups actually seem okay. They seem much better, which is something to think about. So yeah, not too bad. Got a little handful of beetroot there. Okay, so I've got my beetroot here. Not looking the best. Got some ice on the bucket. Um, I'm just going to rinse these off a little bit. Just give them a bit of a slosh around in the water. As you can see, there's some that are looking a bit squishy still. I'm going to have another sort through. But some of them are going to be fine. So that's at least a little bit of a harvest. You have to take what you can get at this time of year. So I'll show you those when they wash up later. Okay, so um, as promised, I'm going to be digging up some Jerusalem artichokes. Um, these are the stems. As you can see, they grow absolutely huge. Um, I stand up. I'm about five foot eight. So yeah, I reckon nearly ten foot, something like that. It's so huge. And they're beautiful. They grow all of this growth in one year. Um, they get nice little sunflowery flowers right at the tops. Um, they make a really good windbreak, shelter, privacy screen. Um, they're brilliant, and you get the crop from them as well. So another good thing about these is the stems, I'll just show you, the stems are kind of soft inside um, and they can go hollowish so it's really really good for things like ladybugs, um, they can hibernate over there during the winter, so great for wildlife too. Um, so yeah what I'm going to do, I'm just going to collect up lots of these sticks and some will go for the compost and some we'll bundle up and put in our wildlife area for the bugs. Okay, so that's a of some of those. You can do this a bit by bit, you don't have to do it all at once. I like to leave some in just to give a bit of structure to the plot really. Um, 
So then all you need to do, the ground is really wet at the minute because um, so we've had so much rain. So if you just pull up and give them a shake, they can also go off to the compost. Your Jerusalem artichokes, can you see? And there's loads and loads down there. Um, so the one thing about Jerusalem artichokes is you will never find them all. So always plant them somewhere where you're happy for them to stay um, or in a big pot. They are very, very vigorous. So we have a little path here, which is stone. They'll happily go under and come up through the stone path. Um, so you do have to keep on top of them. You do have to be happy to put them somewhere and leave them there forever. The benefit of that is you will always have Jerusalem artichokes because once you've planted them, they're going to come back every year. Um, so yeah, these are absolutely delicious roasted, made into a soup and um, with your roast dinner, however you wish. Imogen's vote is for soup. <laughs> um, yeah, she really, really likes it. It's a really nice flavour. So. Yeah, let's dig some more up. There we are. How great are those? Delish. Okay, just to show you, there are some 
greens that are still going on on the plot in January and one is, excuse the very messy bed here, is this um, American land cress and this is a super tasty salad um, it grows at the time of year when there isn't much else so it's even more appreciated and yeah you can just keep picking it all through the winter if you give it some protection then you would get slightly more fleshy soft leaves but these are perfectly edible um, and it self seeds really easily so you don't really need to grow it once you've grown it the first time because it'll just come back on its own um, but I do like to grow a few plants each year just so I can position them where I want them instead of like this one over here which has grown just at the side of the path. Okay, so I think that's pretty much us now for the allotment today. Um, we've done what we can with the polytunnel to strap it down. Imogen's just washing a few of the beetroot and artichokes that we dug up. And we're going to head home um, and tell the family our wonderful news about the polytunnel. Yeah! So yeah, if anybody has had the same problem and um, has managed to resuscitate their polytunnel. I would love to know how you did it. Um, I'm open to all suggestions, so thanks. See you later. Okay, so now we're home. I'm just prepping the beetroot. Um, I'm washing it, peeling it, and then we're using this really cool little gizmo to chop it into teeny tiny little pieces. And um, my son's doing that for me. And once it's in tiny pieces, we're going to use it in some cakes. So I'm just mixing it into a batter. This is a gluten-free cupcake batter, a bit of cocoa powder, and they've made these really yummy buns. Then we've got the Jerusalem artichokes. I'm putting lemon juice over these because it breaks down the inulin and makes it more digestible. Um, I'm also putting some winter savoury on there because that complements really well and helps also to alleviate the gassiness associated with Jerusalem artichokes. And we're just going to roast those in the oven with a little bit of oil. And once they've been in the oven for about 20 minutes or so, we'll add them to the soup. I've fried off some onions and this is a stock I made from vegetable peelings the other day. Um, I'm just adding that in there. It's turned out really well. I used onion skin in there as well to give it a good colour. And then I'm mixing that round, adding in the Jerusalem artichokes, which look great once they come out of the oven. And then just using a stick blender to blend it all up. And once that's really smooth, or as smooth as you can get it, 
um, it's done. And it looks creamy, but there's no cream in it. It's just the Jerusalem artichokes that make it that way. And as you can see from Immy's reaction, it was a success. <laughs> so that was my first attempt at a vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully from here on in there will be less terrible surprises. Um, I guess polytunnels can only blow over every so often, hopefully. Um, yeah, so while I just had a few minutes, I'm just dropping my children at an activity. Surprise, surprise, I do this a lot. So while I'm sat here in the car, I thought I'd just pop on and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the people who are subscribing to the channel. Um, it's really encouraging to see that happening so soon. And yeah, hopefully um, you'll continue to be watching and see you soon. Bye.